Hey everybody, it's Derek from CodeOpinion.com. Today I'm gonna to take a look at how we can handle optimistic concurrency when we're using Azure's Document DB. All right, so I'm in Visual Studio here, um, and what I've created is a .NET Core console application. So I just want to show you what I have um, in my project JSON file as a dependency to get some of this working. So what I'm using here is I just have created a test just kind of for demonstration purposes to illustrate how we can handle a concurrency. So for document DB, there is a .NET Core NuGet package, which is in 1.0, which is Microsoft Azure Document DB Core. I am also using for demonstration purposes, I'm using XUnit, so I have two packages related to that. And then also, I love the Shouldly library for assertions, so I also am using that. So this is what my project JSON looks like, just for reference, if you want to give this a go. All the code here is on my GitHub. Um, I'll have a link in the description, along with the blog post that relates to this, um, this video, uh, so you can get to the source code. So document DB, let's talk about that just quickly, in case you're unfamiliar with it, or, I mean, maybe you're watching this video like uh, kind of in the same mode I was, which was in order to evaluate it. In my case, it was for a side project that I wanted to work on. So document DB is in Azure. It's a NoSQL database. I hadn't tried it yet. So I was, like I said, creating a side project and I figured no better time than, than to try something new. So the cool thing about document DB is it has an emulator. Um, so you can do all your development locally. You don't have to worry about actually going outside and hitting something in Azure and occurring a cost. You can do this all locally to test it. Uh, doc this is the emulator. It comes with a nice little web interface so you can see um, your collections, your documents, and you can kind of manage it that way. So that's document DB. Let's get into some code. So what I've done here is I've created a test that is basically just going to illustrate the purpose of how we can handle uh, optimistic concurrency. So optimistic concurrency, the idea being is that if you fetch a document out of the database, um, say concurrently with mul one multiple users, and then subsequently those users are trying to update that document. Uh, if you're not doing anything related to concurrency, you're not checking concurrency, the general mode there is the last user to submit the the replace or the update is the one that wins which is considered the last one wins which sometimes works depending on your scenario sometimes that may not be a great idea so the idea with optimistic concurrency is you when you fetch your document essentially you are going to have a version with it uh, associated to it and then when you do your update and replacing or up replacing the document you're going to specify what that version was that you had and what document db does is compares that version with what the current version is in the database and if they differ then you're it's going to fail on you so that's what we're going to illustrate how to do that and how that's actually in uh, document db so what i have here is i just have an x unit test and kind of disregard the setup i'm just basically creating a collection what i've done is i've created uh, just a simple poco here um, that a customer that just represents I mean, something that we're going to store, just a document that we're going to store in the database. So if this is pretty much irrelevant, but the real gist of it is we're going to fetch out a document, our customer, uh, one specifically that we just added. And the really interesting thing about document DB and how it deals with this is that it uses e tags. So you may be familiar with e tags uh, for the purpose of caching. So what you would ultimately do is if the HTTP endpoint that you're calling returns you an e tag. You would then be using that e tag in subsequent calls um, to specify um, an if match, and that way it would return you that uh, if the document is uh, has been changed uh, on the other end for caching, then it would return you the new document. Otherwise, it may return you a not modified, and you can use the copy that you already have. So with the e tag you can use what they have as access conditions. And you can specify the condition being the e-tag and the condition type being an if match. And ultimately what that's doing is you're going to pass that along that condition with your replaced document 
Um, and if the e tag matches, you're all good. If it does not match what the current version is um, in the document DB and on the database, then it will throw you a an exception, which is basically because everything's over HTTP, it's going to be returning you a preconditioned failed uh, status code. So this is the simple test that kind of proves this. I'm going to run through it and debug, and you kind of see how this all works here. So I'm just going to debug this test, and we can see what this actual document looks like. And I can just kind of step through it. All right, so we're breaking here. We're just going to fetch out our document. So the document that we're getting just out of our emulator, we can see once it actually fetches it. So let's take a look at this thing. Um, so here's the e tag that I was speaking of. And this is what um, it's coming out just as, as our Azure document, that particular type. We haven't cast it yet to our customer. So we can see that this is what the e tag is. So that's kind of what our next uh, line actually is. It's a little bit weird. It does show it often in the examples, which is you essentially cast it to a dynamic and then subsequently cast it to your actual type. So imagine here we have customers that are um, or users that are concurrently fetching out a particular document. They're making their change. And what we do in our code is we're going to create an access condition. So here's the access condition. We're going to be specifying that the condition is the e tag from the document and that the condition type is the if match. So on our the first call, um, this one will actually succeed and we'll be able to replace the document because nobody's changed it. So once this uh, passes and goes through. Now, this second call is actually going to fail. And the reason is, is because now the e tag has actually changed. And with passing the, the access condition, that's what actually is going to make it fail. So here, I'm, again, I'm using shouldly. This is going to return a document uh, client exception, which I'm expecting, which it does. And then, as we can see, the status code that was returned from the exception is a precondition failed. So then we're good and our test passed. So that's just a really simple way of how you can handle optimistic concurrency with documents in, in DocumentDB in Azure. I just thought that was just really cool. Uh, again, as I said, I was just starting to use it in a side project. And these are the type of things that you discover when you're working on a side project that have kind of some of these use cases. I needed to apply opti optimistic concurrency. And I just thought this was a really easy kind of built in way uh, that you can do it. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned and subscribe uh, for more .NET related videos. Thanks.